Hello and welcome to the first video of the Aid Animations rebranding. That's right, baby. Now I'm a maths YouTuber. I'm calling it Mathemimations. And in today's video, I thought we'd start things off with something kind of simple. We're going to prove the existence of infinity plus one. Now, I understand that infinity plus one is a weird concept. It seems like it shouldn't exist. But that's where you're wrong, kiddo. Let's look at the function f of x is equal to one on x. And let's also graph it. So we'll draw the graph here. There we go. It looks uh, a little something like a that yeah it is a pretty it's pretty good graph it's pretty pretty good graph now now that we have our graph and we have our function we're going to look at what happens as we take x to zero as you can see this graph over here is where hang on this is the x-axis this is the y-axis as we take x to zero the y-axis which is representing f of x goes up it seems to keep going up and if we zoom in on this It'll look something like that. It's going to keep on going up, getting closer and closer to the y-axis. So let's look at f of x, sorry, f of 0, which is 1 on 0. But hang on a minute. We can't divide by 0. That is illegal. So we're going to have to do something else. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the limit as x approaches 0, of 1 on x. Now what a limit does is it allows us to say, you know this thing that we can't do? Well what if we could? That's a limit. So we're going to take the limit of 1 over x as x approaches x, which is in this case saying we can't do 1 over x, but what if we could? Then what would we do? Now, there is actually some bad news with this one, which is that this is a, quote, standard limit. It is just accepted that the limit as x approaches 0 for 1 over x is equal to infinity. Or, well, technically you're not supposed to say equal to infinity, you're supposed to say undefined. But I say equal to infinity because I'm not a maths professor. I'm a YouTuber. Now that we've worked this out... No, wait, let's backtrack. You'll want some proof. Okay, the best way that we can show this is by considering what happens to values as we approach x, because that's what we're doing here. We're saying, well, as x approaches 0, as it gets closer and closer and closer to 0, what happens? And we can assume that whatever happens will follow a pattern that we can use. So we'll start with 1, x equals 1, then we'll go x equals 0 0.1, then we'll do x equals 0 0.01, uh, and then we'll do 0 0.00. .00 zero, one, I skipped one, because... <laughs> what do we get? Well, one over x becomes one over one, which is one. One over zero point one becomes ten, which, which is ten. Clever. One over zero point zero one becomes a hundred, which is that's a hundred, baby. And one over zero point zero zero zero, that number three zeros one becomes one over zero point zero 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 one, which is uh, the right number of zeros. Uh, yeah, that's right. Which is ten thousand. Okay, so as we can see, the smaller x x gets, the larger the function 1 over x gets. This means, clearly, obviously, that if x goes to 0, which is theoretically infinitely small, x must get infinitely large, which is infinity. That's all well and good, but that does nothing in terms of infinity plus 1. Or does it? In actual fact, it does. Because then we just do this one simple thing. We say, 
1 over x plus 1. Turn! That's crazy! That's mad talk! But it's true. Now, you might be saying, well, hold on. As we take the limit of 1 over x plus 1 as x approaches infinity, lim x, lim 1, x plus 1, surely that's just infinity again. But it actually is infinity plus 1. K kind of. Now we're going to have to talk about the concept of bigger infinities and smaller infinities. Oh no. So, to talk about the concept of bigger and smaller infinities, I think the best uh, thing to start with would be the concept of types of infinity, or how we class them. Let's say that we have a set, and that set is x, such that x is all positive numbers. That's 1, or all positive whole numbers. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so on. Obviously, if this keeps going, that's infinite numbers. But if we take the set x, is such that x is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on. And it is also negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, etc. That's intuitively more numbers than up here, right? It makes sense. If we stopped at 5, we would have in one set, this set, we'd have five numbers, and in this set, we'd have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. That's 10 versus 5. And if we go, then go up to 50, we get 100 versus 50. And so no matter how big we get, this one is always twice as large as this one. It, quote, quoting myself in fact, increases at twice the rate. Therefore, we can assume it's infinity, which this is still infinity. There's infinitely many positive numbers and infinitely many negative numbers. This infinity is twice the size as this infinity. It's a larger infinity. And that's a hard thing to get your head around. Because isn't it still infinity? And yes, it is, but it's also not. To graph this, we can imagine that this function increases one number at a time, one, two, three, etc. So it looks like that, and that line's going up to infinity. And this function increases two numbers at a time. One and negative one, two and negative two, etc. So that's going to increase like that. You see? It's getting bigger faster. So although neither one ever reaches true infinity, because of course infinity is a far off place that you'll never get to, this one gets to it far quicker. So in terms of what an infinity act in, what, in terms of what type of infinity it is, it's a bigger one, or a faster one. It's a better infinity. Yeah. And with that in mind, we can see that, well, there are actually bigger infinities. What about that other infinity? Infinity plus 1. Well, if we graph 1 over x, we get this graph. If we assume that this is 1 on the y-axis, then the graph of 1 over x plus 1 looks more like this. It's going to infinity earlier than the first one, so it is a larger infinity. It has one more item in the set. No matter how big this one is, this one will always be one bigger. Even though this one is infinite big, this one is infinite big plus one more big. That's so much big! Look at how big this one is! Oh my god, it's so big! Wow, I've drawn all over my graph. And that is a simple breakdown. Simple breakdown of infinity plus one. Uh, remember to like and also subscribe so that you can get more Mathemimations videos. Next time, we're going to explain why the frequency of an inkling death sound is actually exactly the same 
as an octo league death sound. <laughs>